Hi guys, one more video for lesson 3.1. Um, and this is a lot of information to take in, so I understand if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now, but you know what, this is gonna make it a lot more clear. In fact, of all the videos that we have, this divide by two circuit that I'm getting ready to show you is the one that we're going to apply most often in the coming months, okay? So let's talk about divide by two circuits. It's a specific application, a specific wiring setup for D and JK flip-flops that acted and make, make it behave in a way that uh, is going to be really useful for us later on. Best way to determine this or to demonstrate this, excuse me, is just by showing you. So I've got some circuits, divide by two circuits. These are both built to accomplish the same task, but one on the left is a D flip-flop and the one on the right is a JK flip-flop. There are a lot of similarities before I click the run button. I guess I have to stop this one first. There are a lot of similarities between how these things are built. For instance, preset here and clear are both tied to 5 volts. Now, these are active low as indicated by the bubble. So a zero is what would activate preset. A zero is what would activate clear. By tying it to 5 volts, I, it's an input. So I have to tell the circuit what to do with it. I can't just like leave it open, not connected. It would be really confusing to the machine. Okay, I have to tell it I'm not going to use you. And so by tying it to 5 volts, I will never activate the preset. I will never activate the clear. So I'm just getting rid of those, okay? You'll notice in this circuit, it's the same thing. In fact, we got something funky going on here. I'm just going to delete that, okay? So preset, clear, tied to 5 volts. That's our way of tying it out of the way, saying I'm not going to use you, but I don't want you to be confused about what's going on with the preset and clear inputs. We have a clock voltage running into the external clock in each case, okay? And if you ever need to place it, this is what you look for. It's clock underscore voltage, okay? Type in the word clock and you'll find it. It is the one that's driving the circuit. In both cases, it's a cycle of one hertz. That means one cycle per second, one on-off cycle per second. We do have a red probe set up just to show you when that thing is blinking on and off, just for visual, okay? So I have a red probe in both cases. And I also have an output, a blue probe, in both of these cases. They're both tied to Q, both tied to Q. So the only differences between these two circuits on the left and the right are what are the D inputs doing and what's the JK doing, okay? This is extremely important. You will want to, if I didn't have this in the printable handouts for you, you will want to draw these circuits and highlight one wire. The wire to highlight for this one is the purple wire. Notice that it wraps around from Q0 back around to D. That is the dead giveaway for how this circuit is going to act. You will be asked on later on tests, whenever you can't run multi-SIM files, you'll be asked to look at pictures and just say, what is this actually doing? Anytime you see Q0 wrapping around to D, it is a divided by two circuit. And what that means is this, play. Notice this is going on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And this is a positive edge trigger clock. Notice then, every time the light for red clock one flips on, blue changes. So while this is going on, off, on, off, blue is going on, on, off, off, on, on, off, off. In other words, the speed of the circuit, the frequency of the signal, has been cut in half. It has been divided by two. That's where the divide by two gets its name. So blue runs half the speed of the input signal. Okay. The reason it does this for the D flip flop, by the way, is because if Q is on, Q not is off. So that means that no matter what Q is, the opposite signal is going to be sent to the input, D. Since the opposite signal is sent in, the next time it clocks, the light will switch every single time. Okay? So again, when Q is on, let's pause this, okay? When Q is off, that means that there must be a 1 being sent in here. So the next time the clock voltage hits, whenever we hit that, that rising edge, a 1 will be passed through turning this on, which means that D turn, the Q naught turns off, which means then it's going to be waiting again. The cycle is just going to repeat. It's always going to toggle.
So in other words, this is a way, Q not wrapping around a D is a way of taking this flip-flop and forcing it to toggle at all times. It always do the opposite of what it was doing before. Now, if you think back to the last video, the one you just watched earlier today, hopefully in class, the way that we can create that toggle situation with a JK flip-flop is a lot easier. We don't need to do any wrapping around. All we do with the JK flip-flop is we tie both J and K high. So anytime you see J and K both going to one, it's going to act in that toggle situation, which means we have Q, or the input, excuse me, going on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. And blue here is going on, on, off, off, on, on, off, off, on, on, off, off. Now, one thing to notice before I get off of this little slide here, this little picture, notice that this is positive edge triggered, which means this changes when the light turns on for red. Change, 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 right? This one over here is negative edge triggered, which is why you see these blue lines don't line up, right? They're changing at different times. Even though the red ones are changing at the same time, the blue ones don't, is because this is changing when it turns off. So off, 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 right? Okay, that's a divide by two circuit. Now, last thing, I'm going to zoom out. Let me show you this. We also have what are called divide by four circuits. And what you're going to notice is a lot of the same behavior. Okay, we're not ready to talk about why they're divided by four or how to hook these things up together yet. We'll get to that later on. But what you'll notice is on, off, on, off, on, off. On, on, off, off, on, on, off, off. On, 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 off, 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 on, 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 right? So what's happening here is every single time I add a flip-flop, I cut the speed in half. So this one has been divided by two. This circuit here, this frequency has been divided by four. I can do that with J D flip-flops like I have on the left, if you can see that. Or I can do that with JK flip-flops like I have on the right. It does not matter. We're not ready for that. I just want to show you later on, we could do divide by eight circuits, divide by 16 circuits, and you'll start to notice, man, that sure sounds zero, 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 one, 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 one. That sure sounds like a truth table, doesn't it? Okay. These things are going to become the inputs for truth tables later on. These are going to be the clocks that drive our circuits to work automatically. And that's what we're heading for. Okay. So hopefully, that's a little bit of an idea of what's going on. You should have enough information now to go tackle day two of lesson 3.1 on JK flip-flops and divide by two counters.